good day to our research professor, Mr. Reynaldo C. Rivera Jr., and to our research advisor, Mrs. Grace Joy C. Almanon. I am Jobilin M. Opada, and I would like to greet you all a pleasant day. We will be presenting our research entitled Food and Service Management Students Readiness for Their On the Job Training in the New Normal. Inputs for a proposed training development plan. Together with my groupmates, May Anti Balisi, Charlotte Osarahena, and Jean I. Sinahon. For the presentation of Chapter 1, Jean Sinahon will be the one to explain the background of the study, statement of the problem, significance, and the scope and the limitation of the study. Thank you, Ms. Jobelin M. Opada. Again, my name is Jean I. Sinahon, and I will be the one to discuss the chapter one. The first one is the background of the study. On the job training is a program that students take to gain hands-on experience in the workplace and increase their employability before they graduate. However, in today's global crisis, many schools and businesses shut down because of the pandemic. For this reason, e-learning become increasingly popular among students in both public and private schools to continue the operation of teaching in an online setup. Although e-learning is the best way to continue learning of students during new normal, most of these students in Marikina Polytechnic College disagree because they don't have enough equipment to use during online meetings, poor internet connection, financial ability to buy materials during their laboratories, and lack of exposure to the tools and equipment. Furthermore, their loss of focus, desire, and interest, and at the same time, they don't have much space in their houses for online education. And because of that, the readiness of college students for their OJT outside the school have been affected. That's why researchers have decided to develop a training development plan to further improve the knowledge and skills that they have not gained during online setup. So now let us proceed now to the statement of the problem. Because, because of the new normal way of education, the readiness of these students in Marikina Polytechnic College have been affected for their preparation of their on-the-job training. So this research is prompted to know the readiness level of the three groups of respondents BBTPTED, BIT, and COT in terms of students' preparedness, adaptability to new normal, and the training development. Second, are there significant differences among the perception of, of the three groups of respondents of the food and service management students in the new normal in terms of above mentioned aspects? And the third one is what training plan could be proposed based on the result of the study. The proposed training development will benefit to the group of people, including students, parents, instructors, or professors, industry partners, and of course, the future researchers of Marikina Polytechnic College. For the scope and the limitation, the researchers conducted an online survey to the 103rd year students of Marikina Polytechnic College, 40 students for BTVTED, 40 students for BIT, and 20 students for COT with overall 103rd year students as official respondents. For the discussion of Chapter 2, here is Charlotte O. Sarahena. Thank you, Ms. Jan I. Sinahon. Again, my name is Charlotte O. Sarahena. Now, let's proceed to Chapter 2, Conceptual Framework. This chapter presents the review of related literature and studies, the conceptual model of the study, the research hypothesis, and the definition of terms used in the study. 
According to Republic Act Number no. 7722, otherwise known as the Higher Education Act of 1994, which was signed into law, the declaration of policy of the shall protect, poster, and promote all citizens' right to affordable, high-quality education at all levels, and the and shall take all necessary action to guarantee that education is available to everyone. Ched Memorandum Order Number no. 104, Section 1 of 2017, the internship program is designed to provide students with the opportunity to supplement their classroom instruction with practical experience in a recognized host training establishment. Host training establishment, it refers to Julie duly authorized and registered entity institution or establishment in the Philippines by the Security Exchange Commission or the Department of Trade and Industry or Local Government Unit and with established system of training. However, it is well known fact that transitioning from education to work is not easy. Regrettably, a degree alone does not guarantee employment. University must respond to this demand while also fulfilling the function associated with their social rule, such as the development of successful internship programs that are tailored to the labor market's needs. Before establishing a student training program, colleges should include students and companies in the planning stage. Internship may help schools recruit more students by demonstrating their value as a teaching and learning tool to all linked industry. In connection to revised student manual of Marikina Polytechnic College 2019, the placement and follow-up services is called the college marketing arms that helps students to prepare and find job in their chosen fields to become a disciplined, productive, and responsible future leaders and workers. According to TREA, the present COVID-19 epidemic has produced major problems and has, and has impacted educational sectors, and no one knows when, when it will end. Despite the fact that every country is implementing preventative measures and regulation, the number of cases continue to grow. In the educational context, the new normal should be addressed in the development and implementation of new normal educational policy in order to maintain and provide excellence education despite lockdown and community quarantine. According to FND Roy et al. 2020, in relation into education, Learning readiness as a person's motivation to seek information and engage in behavior change. Being prepared, on the other hand, implies that you have the necessary skills to deal with what lies ahead and to learn from, as well as contribute to what is going on. It indicates that you have important skills that will assist you not only in coping, but also in achieving your next learning opportunity. Next is related study was conducted by Adhai et al. 2021. The study titled Internship Preparedness Among Students in Healthcare-Related Field in the COVID-19 Era, Exploring the Attitude and Knowledge in Saudi Arabia. The purpose of the study is to understand student attitude toward and knowledge of COVID-19 and examine the predictive predictors of the attitude toward hard hygiene. In this study, 100 students were analyzed and the questionnaire was divide, divided into three groups, namely sociodemographic data, knowledge of COVID-19, and attitude toward hand hygiene. Based on the result analyzed by the researchers, there, there is no signi statistically significant difference across age, hospital, setting, or gender. The results suggested a strong need of current training programs regarding hand hygiene practices among students of healthcare-related fields. A high study is very much related to the present study as it also tackled the internship preparedness among students during the COVID-19. 
In contrast, it differs in locality as the study was conducted in, in Saudi Arabia. In addition, the respondents utilized in the present study were food and service management students, while the related study is students from healthcare-related fields. Another study was conducted by Trinidad 2020 entitled Implementation of the Student Internship Program in the Philippines, the BSC, BSC in Hospitality Man Management Program of Host Training Establishment in the National Capital Region. The purpose of the study is to determine the level of implementation of the student internship in the, in the Philippines program of the Bachelor of Science in Hospitality Management Program of host, of host training establishment in the national capital, capital region in terms of requirements, obligation, or responsibilities, and training plan or program. Second, to assess the level of improvement of the workplace, industry-wide and in the industry sector technical competency as perceived by the student interns, faculty, or, or coordinators and hotel internship coordinators. The cross wallis edge test was used to find out if there are differences in the assessment of the level of implementation and approved competencies. The respondents believe that all the essential requirements set by CHED for the HTS were highly implemented, where, where yes, there were difference in the assessment regarding the obligation or responsibilities. All the response, respondents believe that workplace competencies were extremely improved. On the other hand, the respondents had gaps in their assessment in the industry-wide competencies. And, and now for the conceptual model of the study, it shows the input, process, and output used to present the conceptual model, which will help the researcher in conducting this research. For input, it includes survey questionnaire and third-year food and service management student from Marikina Polytechnic College, which will become respondents of this study. For process, involves content validi validation of survey questionnaire, administration and retrieval of the survey questionnaire, statistical treatment of data and analysis and interpretation of the data. For output, it consists of readiness level of the third year third year food and service management student for the on the job training in new normal. Significant difference between the perception of the three groups of respondents on the level of readiness of the food and service management students and proposed training development plan based on the result of the study. And now for our research hypothesis pursued in this study is that there are no significant differences among the perception of the three groups of respondents on the level of readiness of the food and service management students on their internship in the new normal in terms of adaptability to new normal, student preparedness and training and development. Now, let's proceed to definition of terms used in the study. The following terms that are included to the present study were defined operationally. The first one is adaptability to new normal. It refers to the level of adaptability of FSM students from face-to-face -to, -face to new normal mode of e-learning. Next, BIT, it refers to one of the courses offered at Marikina Polytechnic College, which stands for Bachelor of Industrial Technology. PTVT, it refers to one of the courses offered at Marikina Polytechnic College, which stands for Bachelor of Technical Vocational Teacher in Education. COT, it refers to one of the courses offered at Marikina Polytechnic College, which stands for Certificate of Technology. FSM, it refers to Food and Service Management, one of the courses offered in Marikina Polytechnic College. Next, on the job training. 
a type of training that is required to college students before they graduate. It's either in public or private sector that is given to a paid employee when he or she is engaged in productive work and that provides knowledge and skills that is essential to the full and adequate performance on the job. Next, student preparedness. It refers to the readiness of the students to make or to do something. Training and development. It refers to educational activity within a company created to enhance the knowledge and skills of employees while providing information and instruction on how to better perform specific tasks. And lastly, training development plan. It involves programs that enable students to learn precise skills or gain knowledge to improve job performance. This plan identifies areas to develop or enhance and ascertains what actions or activities need to be taken to acquire and embed that learning. For the discussion of Chapter 3, here is May Ante Balisi. Thank you, Ms. Charlotte Sarahena. Again, my name is May Ante Balisi. And I will present the chapter 3. This chapter presents the methods of research use, the sources of data, the data gathering instrument, data gathering procedure, and the statistical treatment of data. This study utilized quantitative and descriptive method of research. According to Fleetwood D. 2021, quantitative research is defined as a systematic investigation of phenomena by gathering quantifiable data and performing statistical, mathematical, or computational techniques. This study also used the descriptive design as stated by BAT A. 2021. The descriptive research is a method collects quantifiable information for statistical analysis of the population sample. This method suitable for gathering information on the current situation. It is useful in expressing the actual condition and nature of the situation at the same time of the evaluation. It is defined to describe the research quantitatively and compare the result of the respondents. The sources of data this study were composed of 100 third-year food and service management students who are officially enrolled at Marikina Polytechnic College academic year 2020 and 2021. The the main goal of purposive sampling is to focus on particular characteristics of a population that are interests in which the researcher will enable, enable to answer the research question. The instrument to be used in this study to determine the readiness level of the food and service management students under on the job training is questionnaire checklist. The questionnaire checklist will be adapted by the researcher based on the suggested reference materials. The instruments were administered to the assigned respondents in consultation with the researcher's advisor. The validations, comments, suggestions, and further improvement were being shown to the advisor by the researchers during the process of making the instrument. The data gathering procedure. The researchers will seek permission to conduct the study from the School of Marquina Polytechnic College upon approval of the request letter. The researchers will administer the instrument to the respondents. The researchers will disseminate the validated questionnaire to 100 food and service management students, respondents from Marikina Polytechnic College via Google Forms. 
with the help of food and service management professors. After the respondents answer the questionnaire checklist, the researchers will automatically collect the data for tally and interpretation. The statistical measures will be used to, the, to treat the data gathered in the study are the following. Median. This was utilized to find the middle value in the evaluation of student respondents in terms of students' preparedness, students' technical skills, students' adaptability to new normal and training development. A four-point skill was provided A four point skill was a four a four point scale was provided to indicate the quality or degree of appreciation of students. <coughs> a four point scale was provided to indicate the quality or degree of appreciation of respondents on each item. In the analysis of the items, four is the highest, which means strongly agree, and one is the lowest, which means strongly disagree. Each test. This was used to determine if there are significant differences between the evaluation of the BIT and COT students on the level of readiness of their internship in the new normal in terms of the following aspects. Student preparedness, student technical skills, students adaptability to a new normal. Ms. Jubilin Opada will present the chapter 4. I am Jobilin M. Upada and I will be presenting the chapter 4. These chapters deals with the presentation, analysis, and interpretation of the data gathered in this study. Table 3 shows the median and verbal interpretation of the three groups of respondents on the level of readiness of third-year food in service management students with regards to students' preparedness. Table 3 shows that the BIT and COT third-year food and service management respondents agree on all indicators while BTV TED strongly agree on two of the indicators, which, uh, which is they are prepared to gain more necessary skills and they are prepared to mobilize their skills and enhance their knowledge of their on-the-job training. These findings imply that the three groups of respondents are ready to use and apply the knowledge and skills that they have gained during their online classes for their upcoming on-the-job training in the new normal setup. Table 4 present the median and verbal interpretation of the three groups of respondents on the level of readiness of third-year food and service management students with regards to adaptability to new normal. As presented in Table 4, COT respondents agree on all indicators, while BTV TED and BIT disagree on the indicators. I appreciate online classes more than face-to-face -face session, and I learn better in the new normal way of learning. This result implies that some of the BTV TED and BIT respondents are not ready for an online setup because they don't have the online equipment that they will use during their online classes. And also, it's hard for them to adapt to learning in an online environment because they are affected by their socioeconomic status. 
Table 5 present the median and verbal interpretation of the three groups of respondents on the level of readiness of third-year food and service management students with regards to training and development. As presented in Table 5, Bitivited and BID strongly agree on the indicators that training development is effective in providing an opportunity to acquire knowledge, skills, and desirable attitudes and the values. Training development is effective in providing me with the right paths and preparing myself for the future. And they agree on the rest. While COT is the only agree across all of the indicators. This data implies that the respondents are highly ready for training and development for their on-the-job training because this training and development will give them the best quality of hands-on experience that will be helpful to increase their knowledge and skills and become fully equipped for their on-the-job training outside the campus. Now, let's proceed for the significant difference among the perception of the three groups of student respondents on the level of readiness on on-the-job training. Table 6 presents the test of significance differences among the perception of respondents on the level of readiness. Table 6 reveals that the computed B values for student preparedness are greater than 5% level of significance which means the null hypothesis is confirmed. This means that the respondents' perceptions do not differ significantly. These findings imply that the respondents agree that the indicators of student preparedness were appropriate for the inputs for a proposed training development plan. As seen in Table 7, the computed p-values for students' adaptability to the new normal are greater than 5% level of significance. Therefore, the decision is not to reject the null hypothesis. Thus, the respondents' perception do not differ significantly. These findings imply that the respondents agree that the indicators of adaptability to new normal were appropriate for the inputs for a proposed training development plan. It can be gleaned from Table 8, the computed p-values for training and development are greater than 5% level of significance. Therefore, the decision is not to reject the null hypothesis. Thus, the respondent perception do not differ significantly. These findings imply that the respondents strongly agree that the indicators of training and development were appropriate for the inputs for a proposed training development plan. In general, Table 9 shows that the computed age values of student preparedness, adaptability to new normal, and training and development fall within the critical P values. This means that there is no significant difference between the evaluation of a student as regards the input for a proposed training plan. This result indicates that the respondents strongly agree that the three groups of respondents are ready to use and apply the knowledge in skills that they have gained during their online classes for their upcoming on-the-job training in the new normal setup. For the presentation of the chapter 5, this chapter presents the summary, conclusion, and recommendation of this study. For the conclusion, based on the findings of the study, the following conclusions were drawn. Number one, the student respondents' perception in terms of students' preparedness, adaptability to new normal, and training and development is strongly agreeable. For the number two, 
it is revealed that out of the three criteria of student level of readiness, student preparedness was recorded as the lowest. As the outcome of the study, a training development plan for the student to propose to prepare the student in on the job training on new normal. For the recommendation, based on the findings and conclusion of the study, the researchers hereby recommend the following. For the number one, the inputs for training development plan should be implemented to prepare the students in on-the-job training on new normal. For the number two, this training development plan can be conducted as part of a supervised industrial training to assess preferred the FSM students on on-the-job training in new normal. The number three, the future researchers should conduct further studies related to enhancements of training development plan. And that's all of our presentation. Good day and thank you everyone.